What the hell? <laughs> Hi guys, this is Matty Ace, and in today's video I'm going to give you a number of tips for the game Starfield. And starting off here, I'm walking up to a weapon workbench, and uh, I do a lot of uh, modding for weapons, but even if you're not into that, you can still use it just to rename whatever weapons you want to keep track on. Obviously the ones that you're using, so that you don't accidentally sell them or, uh, well, whatever, for whatever reason, yeah, lose yeah, them. Progress, and just uh, it just down. makes it easier to keep track of them so in your down. inventory. Well, this may not be but, uh, equally important if you have a mod for inventory that you can find on the yeah. Nexus. But anyway, this is a very simple thing, very quickly done, and it's helped me out quite a bit just keeping track of things. Now if you want to level up anything related to crafting, you need to research whatever it is you want to craft, and for that you need this research lab which you can find on your starter ship and here in Constellation's basement. Now for someone like me who is basically all over the place when it comes to a game like this, I want to craft everything, research everything, I want to explore everything, do all the missions, and I have a problem keeping track of what material I need. Now whenever you go to any kind of workbench or this research lab, you can press R whenever you highlight a craftable or researchable object and what happens is that you get this uh, light blue magnification glass icon on the right side of each of the necessary resource that you need to perform that research or to make that mod or building or uh, whatever medicine or food you need. So uh, yeah, that's a great way to keep track on whatever resources you're looking for. And then when you find that out on uh, a mission or in a vendor or whatever, and you just pick it up because you know that's something you're gonna need for later. Now the problem with crafting and looting is of course that when you're out on these missions, you're going to quickly get over encumbered because of all the stuff that you're picking up. Now check this out by the way. <laughs> she's an energy weapons expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so she will use that because she's an expert on it. I could upgrade that and give her now one of the things that I did in the beginning was that I planned my weapons that I brought with me on missions for what kind of ammo I had access to and especially what kind of ammo I had a lot of. And since I don't use the Grendel and the Maelstrom all that much myself, because I don't really like that type of weapon in uh, single player games, what I did was that I modded some of them and made them into uh, semi-automatic weapons with higher damage per bullet, but much slower fire rate and obviously more range and more accuracy that fits me a lot better. Here I'm just trying out revolver even though I don't actually have that much ammo for it. But the Maelstrom and the Grendel I've actually turned into semi-automatic, uh, uh, I don't know, close range snipers or whatever you want to call it. But it worked really well and uh, to me I never risked running low on ammo. Now for the ones of you who are ammo conservatives, shotguns and kind of energy equivalences of shotguns, I guess you could call this weapon that, they are very, very cost efficient and very easy to use. I am not a big fan of fast fire rate automatic weapons in these types of games. So there I pressed zero for the sake of healing up using a medkit, you probably heard the sound. I'm browsing through some of the weapons and I've turned several of my fast fire rate fully automatic weapons into something like this. You get more damage out per bullet and I just enjoy the playstyle a bit more. And one of the obvious reasons why revolvers and pistols are good is because they don't weigh you down all that much uh, when it comes to your inventory. So yeah, that's yet even another thing to keep in mind. And uh, the one material that I had the hardest to find when it comes to uh, weapons upgrades is Neon. Now, it's probably not hard if you're actually looking for it, but it wasn't something that I came across just randomly. Now, among other things, you need Neon for laser upgrades. Don't underestimate grenades, they are very, very useful. And also remember that when you're in your inventory and uh, you're browsing through all your weapons, press the key B, this is of course for PC gaming, this way you can assign weapons and consumables to any of the numbered keys being 1 to 9 and even 0 and a few more keys, you will see that once you get into that inventory. Now I use them almost exclusively for weapons 
and I have the medkits assigned to the key zero. Now, there are a few more options, and uh, yeah, you just have to fiddle around with it and see whatever you find, whatever you're comfortable with. And uh, remember, the AI of your enemies are basically as smart or dumb, however you want to call it, as they were in Fallout 4. Now, they do occasionally use jetpacks, so of course that's an upgrade. And there are a few more alternatives that I've seen that uh, I didn't really recognize, but I guess I did expect and hoped for a little bit more. So next thing is about fast traveling and getting to your mission location the fastest and the easiest and the smoothest. Check this out. See, I'm in this house. Way back in Fallout, you couldn't, you couldn't fast travel when you're inside of a house like this. So, uh, or at least, yeah, Fallout, well, at least Fallout 3 and Vegas and Skyrim, you couldn't fast travel in the house. Now you press, in my case, L because of the keyboard. I'm gonna do this quest, so I have this marked, I go down here, set course, R, press here, and I just jump. And this works as long as uh, right. you don't have contraband, Let's get this crate into space. or if you're over encumbered. If you have contraband that could be blocked and it can be grayed out, right? Then you have contraband. That's how you see contraband, by the way. That's what contraband looks like. So yeah, notice how it's yellow there in the gray area and in the same field where it says Aurora. If you have anything in your inventory, in your ship, or in any of the inventory of your followers, then uh, contraband can cause a lot of problems. Now you can sell it at the Crimson Fleet and the Trade Federation, I think it is, but the problem is sometimes getting there. And Crimson Fleet is, uh, depending on how you play the game, probably going to be your enemies. However, getting arrested for, for example, contraband is going to open up the possibilities to work for United Colonies in order to infiltrate uh, Crimson Fleet, and uh, that way you can do trades with them. Are you shooting someone? <laughs> it looks so funny. Go, Sarah, go. Wait, come on. Come on. This is Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it looks kind of funny, I'm not gonna lie, that looks kind of funny. So yeah, there is so much to talk about in this game. This crate, for example, in Constellation, it has unlimited storage capacity, but it's not really connected to the workbenches here as I thought it would. So the way I play the game, I have to actually pick up whatever I need and have it in my inventory in order to craft, which is really irritating. That is something that you don't need to do when you build your own outposts, because then it can, uh, you can use material that is stored in the outpost crates or storage containers. Well, some of them anyway. So yeah, aside from the obvious reasons of making your weapons and even your spacesuits more powerful by modding, they, it also, for the most part anyway, increases the value of the weapons, so it's not a waste to mod for the sake of leveling up and for the sake of selling weapons. And uh, for the remaining of this video, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of uh, the kind of weapon mods I've done in the past. Uh, most of these weapons I'm not using anymore, but at some part uh, of the early game, this might actually be quite beneficial to you. So thank you for watching, and if you want to see me live stream this game or Battlefield 1, I do that on my main channel. This channel is actually my secondary channel. Cutter, this one, you, I just changed the skin on it. Uh, disassembler. This one has the um, 
ex I think the most the most <laughs> uh, specific about this weapon is that I have the standard explosive rounds. That's why um, this is generally a shotgun. Otherwise, it makes it. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little bit un uh, undecided or indecided with that with this one. Long barrel, no optic. It's just iron sight, grip stock, tactical stock, and. Uh, Standard magazine, no internal mod yet. Here's my modded Maelstrom. I just I don't want it to be a fast fire rate. I want it to be more mid range. My Orion also mid range, but that's an energy weapon, of course. Um, yeah, the the mod here is you can see it looks very different. Um, my um, Orion, I I really like this weapon, even though I didn't put much. Uh, emphasis more on uh, energy weapons yet in this game because there's so many other places where I want to put my um, my skill points. Mm. My Grendel. Um. Ah, uh, wait. I'm probably going to throw that away. I'm not, I'm not going to use that one. This one I love though. This is a VSS. I, I always asso associate this weapon with Stalker because, I mean, we've seen it in Battlefield also, of course, but and many other games. But for me, this is a Stalker weapon. It's, it's just a personal thing. Mm, this uh, revolver. I didn't make the changes on this one myself. And uh, here we have the suppressed Beowulf. 